Hello and welcome to this overnight taste challenge. I have to change the description down below from Dawn Busters uh, because it's 5.04 a.m. Central Time. It's still dark. It won't be daylight for another hour. Didn't want to wait till after the news. After I dropped that bottle of Goose Island Bourbon County Stout yesterday, I felt like drinking a whole bottle of uh, whiskey, but uh, I calmed down. No use crying over spilled beer, even though it was $9.99 plus tax for one bottle. It was interesting. I think if I would have dropped the Crucevice, and it only dropped a foot, they would have, it would have been okay. It would have, would not have broken. The Goose Island, I dropped it that foot. It hit the pavement, psh, hit the concrete and smashed. I think Anheuser-Busch uses very thin bottles. If you notice any kind of Anheuser-Busch glass, Anheuser-Busch InBev, it's extremely thin. The glass is thin. Um, that goes back to Carlos Brito when he bought, when he, when his company InBev bought Anheuser-Busch in 2008. They did a lot of cost cutting. A lot of it, and much of it was necessary because and as the bush was going down fast with uh, their bloated costs. But one thing you notice is they made the bottles unusually thin, lightweight. So it takes very little to smash them. So as soon as that uh, wing says, morning, man, morning, wing. As soon as that bottle left my hand, I just thought in a split second, it's going to hit the pavement and it's going to break and that it just shattered into it must have been 50 pieces of glass i had to pick it all up and then get a bucket of water and kind of splash the water off the pavement but um under the porch but i do think that was um i mean it's not any big deal if they use thinner glass because normally you don't go around dropping your bottles but when it gets real cold and dry or it's more like cold because it was still raining or snowing my, my skin gets tight and it, it gets, you know, you don't realize your hands are slippery. So I just went to set it down and it fell. How much snow did you get? Oh, a couple of inches, I guess, two inches. We get that about once every 10 to 15 years, I think, snow. I can remember 1973, heavy snow. Then maybe in 89, then not again until 2004, very heavy then. And then maybe a little bit between 2004 and 2017, but then 2017, a pretty good amount. But anyway, MSN saying it's 29 degrees here right now. AccuWeather says it's 33, so I don't know who's accurate. For this overnight taste challenge we're looking at 10 high bourbon whiskey a blend I got that lamp I went and plugged the lamp in um, so I wouldn't be in the dark sour mash Kentucky bourbon whiskey a blend Blended bourbon whiskey. Yeah, sort of like if you get blended scotch, blended Irish whiskey, blended Canadian whiskey, blended Kampuchean whiskey, <laughs> blended Azerbaijani whiskey. All right, versus. Oh, and that was introduced in 1935. Versus ancient age, Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey, not blended straight whiskey. Okay, introduced in 1936, sour mash. That one's sour mash. So there's a lot of similarities between these two. They're both from Kentucky. They're both bourbon of one sort or another. They're both sour mash. They were both introduced in the 1930s. Now, I know that Sazerac and Buffalo Trace say it. Ancient Age came out in 1946. But I have so much evidence 
to show otherwise. And I tried to tell the company that. I said, if Ancient Age came out in 1946, why can I, sh how am I able to show you ads for that bourbon? And on the bottom of the ad, it says copyright 1937, 1938, whatever. They ran ads for 10 years before the bourbon was available. It makes no sense. It's not the first time I found errors with a company's promotionals. Uh, I remember years ago, Anheuser-Busch kept saying that Bud Ice was introduced in 1984. And I I did research. Oh, I knew that wasn't true. I just knew it. So I had all kind of documents that showed it was 1994. And there was a, it was a typographical error. So I wrote a letter, email, you know, electronic mail to the company. And they said, oh, we're going to look into it. Yeah, in about a week, they changed it. And they've been saying 1994 ever since. So you're welcome. You're welcome. I appreciate that. Helping them out. Okay. Um, now, does it really matter, though? Because 1936, 1946, I wasn't born. You probably weren't born. Some of the viewers may have been born. My grandparents were in high school by 1946, raising children. <laughs> My grandfather was at the University of San Francisco working on his uh, advanced medical degrees till he came back to New Orleans, 1948, seven, start practicing. Uh, yeah, he said that's when he became a San Francisco 49ers fan, because 1946, he was going to the university in San Francisco and uh, they started playing that year. That was the first year of the 49ers and he would go to the games. And uh, so he got exposed to that. All right, so uh, 19, okay, so 80 proof, they're both 80 proof. They're both Sazerac brands and they're both aged three years. So. <laughs> They're common. They have many commonalities except one major <coughs> difference. This is straight bourbon. That's a blend. Is it going to make a difference? Well, so far in the taste challenges, it hasn't really made much of a difference, uh, honestly. So um, you might say, well, you could save some money that way. No, you can't because these cost the same price. They're the same. They're $9.99 plus tax. That's what the Bourbon County Stout cost me, $9.99 plus tax, and I smashed it. Never got to even taste it. Didn't get to smell it, though. It smelled great. The aroma wafting up from the pavement really smelled good. Oh, boy. Okay, so let's go with 10 High first since it came out a year before. Used to be called Hiram Walker's 10 High. Then... Oh, in the 1980s, that company got split up, bought out, and uh, Sazerac got a hold of it. Uh, same type thing with Ancient Age. It was started by, I don't know what company, Barton, I don't know. And it was a mimic brand anyway. meaning that in the 1930s, they were trying to play off of Seagram's ancient bottle whiskey. There was a whole line of Seagram's whiskeys and gin, and it was called Ancient Bottle. A, B. And, and if you look at the old advertisements, you can check me on that. I always encourage people to check me on things. When I used to teach history I would or geography, I would tell the students, you should always check me. And if you come back and show me I'm wrong, then I'll... Uh, I'll go along with you. Of course, some would tell me, you're wrong, you're wrong. I see you have information to, to, to show otherwise. But no, they couldn't produce any information. They would just say, no, you're wrong. I said, that's not, that's not sourcing. That's not citing a source. That's not proving your point. Screaming, that some, screaming out that a person's wrong is not proof. Or telling somebody, look it up. Or... Everybody knows that. That's not proof. That's 
invalid. <laughs> okay. But yeah, I, if you ever see anything on here, check me. I'll uh, I'll go along with it if I'm wrong. Okay, so. <clears throat> but yeah, they used to have ancient bottle A B with that old English, you know, med medieval type writing. Calligra calligraphic. It was a red A and a red B, and then the rest was in black. Ancient bottle, ancient bottle gin, ancient bottle uh, bourbon from Seagram's. And then the bottle was all rumpled, you know. You know, they still do that with the gin today. Go to the go to the liquor store, or in our case, the grocery store, and look up on the shelf at Seagram's. And they have, have those, um, there's two styles of bottles now that they have. One is like a basket weave. So if you get one, it looks like straw interwoven up and down the bottle. It's like the bottle, this glass, of course, but it looks like it's made out of straw. Other times you'll see it and it's almost like a paisley pattern, these little curly cues all up and down the bottle. But then the bottle has that strange identifiable Seagram's, you know, that, I don't know what you call that shape. It's like triangular at the top and then it goes straight down. And of course, then the 1.75 liter bottle, the big bottle is round and it's glass. It's it's not plastic. They don't do plastic with Seagram's um, gin. But that's the old bottle design. That's what I'm talking about, the ancient bottle. And if you look at the old ads from 1937 when it first came out, they were saying uh, Seagram's ancient bottle, it mimics the old bottle design of hundreds of years ago, blah, blah, blah. And then right after, all of a sudden, there was ancient age in the same type rumpled bottle with a very curiously similar basket weave type design. And that ran for a long time in the same calligraphic thing. Well, uh, as the Seagram's thing died out and they got rid of their ancient bottle and they rebranded their stuff, then ancient age curiously took on a different bottle design kind of like uh i don't know uh jack daniels <laughs> you know everybody all of a sudden had these jack daniel bottle jack daniel bottles and what did jack daniels do brown foreman what did they do about three years ago to differentiate themselves they redid their bottle with the sharp edges you know they got the sharp edges I don't know, it might cost a little more money to make those kind of things. I doubt it, but they wanted to kind of get away from the people chasing them. People like to put down on Jack Daniels. Oh, that's trash. Nobody drinks it. It's garbage, you know, blah, blah, blah. But then but they're all chasing it, you know. They're intimidated by it, I guess. They're like the Budweiser of whiskey. You show a Jack Daniels bottle and it's like you showed a vampire a crucifix. <gasps> No one cares about that. Get it away. Get it away. Go away. Away. It burns. It burns. It burns. Same thing with Budweiser. You know. I don't know why that is. That's one of the reasons I started the channel. You show somebody a bottle of Budweiser and they go into a seizure. And you say, well, it's just a bottle of common beer. It'd be like if you were in a club that they they ate canned meat and you pull out a can of Spam, they'd all start to seize, go into convulsions. Spam, bam, bam. So why do people fear the, the base, the, um, why do they fear the prototype? I don't get it. But anyway, I don't, I, I'm, I'm at, I'm at, I am at an advantage in my own channel because I don't have a horse in a race. I mean, I don't care. I've said this and I'll say it again. If it's macro, micro, middle crow, I don't care. I'm like uh, Nikki in Casino. I just, Nikki didn't care. He just didn't care. Okay. Um, of course, I hope if some of the other beer people say, let's go have a meeting out in a cornfield about trouble we might have. I don't think I'll, I'll go to the meeting. Okay. Okay. Um, Read some of the comments, then we'll start this taste challenge, this overnight taste challenge. The breakfast of champions, yes. 
Alberto says, good morning, Ron. Good morning, Alberto. Wing says, is ancient age better than Evan Williams? Uh, in my opinion, no, it is not. I think Evan Williams is better, but it's not way better. I don't know if I want to pay $4 more a bottle for it, but, you know, it's probably a little better. Jason says, Weller is near impossible to get here. Not impossible. Um, yeah, it's common down here, Weller. We can get all the Wellers. But think about it. Sazerac's headquarters is here. <laughs> okay. I can drive to their headquarters in 40 minutes. It's right there in Metairie, Louisiana. And they're about to build their big Sazerac Museum in downtown New Orleans. The Sazerac Experience. How about Louisiana? Oh, yeah, it's very common. How old is your oldest viewer? Oh, about 110. I don't know. There are so many you're wrong types in university. Oh, in the university? Yeah. There's a lot of them in high school, too, and they really don't know anything. <clears throat> Wing said, did you listen to John Lennon all day yesterday? <clears throat> I didn't listen to John Lennon at all. Lennon at all. We'll be seeing gin reviews anytime soon? No. Unless, unless I get a bottle of Albertson's gin. Because, I mean, for $4.99, what could go wrong? And secondly... Um, it's made by Sazerac, I do believe, v via, <laughs> it's made by Sazerac for Albertsons via Midwest Grain Products, you know, and it's like a party, a second party and a third party. I wonder if breweries did the same thing with attaching their names to others or adopting different can and bottle designs. More than likely they do. The new Budweiser aluminum bottles are cool. Yes, I agree with that. Why does there seem to be so much drama involved in beer tube? I have wondered the same thing over the years. I think I have some theories about that. <laughs> I do have some theories about that. Wing says he was killed 37 years ago today. I remember I was eating a bowl of cereal that next morning. I believe it was Cheerios and my mother's get ready for school. And my mother said, uh, John Lennon was killed. One of the Beatles was killed. She was looking in a newspaper. I didn't know who that was. I mean, I knew who the Beatles were, of course. Everybody knew that. I mean, that's one of the things you grow up knowing about. But um, I didn't know who they were, each individual member, because I just was only 12 years old. I didn't know. But I remember I went to school, and nobody was really talking about that. But uh, um. That day I came home, I got off the bus, and I said, let me go see on the radio what they're saying about this man that was killed. Oh, it was it. It was all night on AM radio. There was some, I think it was an AM station. There was some national broadcast out of New York City, and it was like eight hours long, all about John Lennon. had different reporters talking. And um, so I got my tape recorder, you know, old tape recorder, and I uh, recorded about two hours of it. And I kept that tape for years, and I couldn't figure out what happened to it. But um it was really interesting. Um, so uh, I thought to myself, I said, well, if um, they're talking that much about John Lennon, he must be important, and the Beatles must be more important than I had even imagined. So I, I went out and bought a Beatles record that year, or it might have been in January when I got some grass cutting money, because that's what I did for job. And I bought Magical Mystery Tour and I listened to it and I thought, oh, this is really interesting. So then I just went out over the next year and bought every Beatles album <laughs> from, let's see, uh, well, I bought all their newer stuff and then eventually within the next, by 1988, I guess, 89, I don't know why I waited so long, I bought all of their albums. 
all of them, you know, the whole thing, including rarities and, and uh, um, 1962 to 66 Red Album, which you need to get because remember back in those days, a lot of times they wouldn't put hit singles on the albums. So you would miss songs like um, Lady Madonna or um, um, We Can Work It Out. A lot, a lot of that stuff wasn't on albums. So it was like, I don't know, it was a controversy between the American and the British record labels. The American Capitol Records division said, no, you always have to have the hit songs on the albums. And then the British division, EMI, Parlophone Records said, no, no, you never put the hit singles on the album. You make people buy the single and the album. Of course, the American viewpoint was that's a ripoff. You're, you're jipping the consumer because you're making them double purchase. I don't know. It was just a philosophical difference. Okay. Now, um, Yeah, this one's a lot clearer. That one's cloudy. We talked about the 10 high cloudiness. This has got to be 10 high. Yeah, so I got to mix them up really good because that'll give it away. Uh, I'm going to read a few more comments, and then we'll do the taste test. Enough talking. Jason said, yeah, like I've been part of the whiskey fabric for some years, and I don't see anything like that in between Dr. Dave and Lee Russell, a huge number of dislikes on some videos. I know. I think from my experience with the whiskey crew, those guys, they seem to be a lot more um, kind of level-headed or they're not uh, hot to be offended real fast or something. I don't know. I don't know what it is about the beer video people that they're extremely volatile. And so you could be friends one day and arch enemies the next. And I, I just don't get it because uh, my philosophy the whole time was we ought to just get along. So what if we have some little personal disagreement? It doesn't really matter. We all we all like beer. We should just get together and drink beer and talk about the brands and forget all that stuff. That's kind of childish, you know. But their approach was, no, no, there's some people you don't like and they have bad political views or this one's this one's this way, and I hate them. I hope they die. But so I, my, I, I just say I don't understand it. And then they go around. I'm gonna put dislikes on your videos. I'll show you. Well, I never do that. Never. If you see any dislikes, it's not coming from me. And I wish there was a way that it would show it. You know, so you could see. There's nothing from Ronald Terrio. You know. Wish you would. The only thing you'll ever see from me on anybody's video is like a kind comment. Might be something like, I've had that beer. It's pretty good. And I don't say a lot because I can't really think of things to say. Or I might answer a question about distribution. They might say, I wonder if that's sold. And I might say, well, I did some research and it's sold here or there. But to do the hate and the angry stuff um, and the factionalism, ganging up and this faction doesn't like that faction and we'll show you and all that. We're not going to let you participate. Or... No, it's just not my bag. I'm sorry. And then Dr. Dave was caught up in that for a while, if you remember. But he started to have second thoughts about it. And I, I remember I told Maria Devon last year, I said, he's not going to stay with it. Because she was saying, he's he's so bad, you know, he's so cruel. And I said, yeah, but he's not going to stay with it. I told, I told her, I said, I'm telling you, the ice is breaking on that. He doesn't feel right about it. I, I could tell there was some little inklings that he didn't feel comfortable with it. So I just paid back evil with good and did my, you know, my positive energy projection. And then um, he just contacted me one day out of the blue. And he said, let's do a hangout. I, I got to talk to you about some stuff. And so he, you remember that Dr. Dave came on air on air. Now, some people will say, oh, he's this and that. Well, a lot of people are this and that. But what did he say on air, live on air? It's still posted. 
he apologized for what he did and he said he was totally out of line way out of line is what he said and he thought it was insane to do all that angry man hatred over beverages and he of course then he's like he told me in private he said i know what's going to happen now the gang he was running with, you know, attacking me and attacking Maria. He said, now all hell's going to break loose because they want me to be part of that, that keep it going, that instead of positive energy projection, you know, the hate, hatred energy projection. But, um, well, then that's exactly what happened. They got so furious. He was part of their gang, you know, but then they started coming after him and he just told them, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to stop. I don't care, you know. You people are crazy. Of course, they all unfriended him, and now, then he was, he went from being the, the, their guy, their guy, to their arch enemy. But he wasn't going to be their useful idiot anymore. All right, anyway, so yes, that's an example that people can overcome these negative forces, you know, the negative energy. So there's a, there's a kind of a long drawn out answer to your question, but yeah, I think it is an interesting thing why they would have all that drama in the beer community when it's apparently not in the whiskey community. It could be, it's not because whiskey is different from beer because they're beverages. It's that the people addressing the beverage are different, right? Why do some countries have constant internal problems and defective governments and they never do anything proper? Is it because of their climate or their location? Or is it because of the people who live in the country? You might be able to figure that out without thinking too deeply about it. Okay, so Wing says, Jim Beam or Evan Williams? I would say Ty, but I'll go with Evan Williams every time because it's cheaper. Eh, buy maybe a dollar, but it's still cheaper. Jason says, hmm. I have a soft spot for beans since it's one of the first bourbons I enjoyed. I have a soft spot for it too. I always like that people say, oh, it's terrible. I don't, I don't see that. Williams seem more interesting if a bit more rough. Evan Williams, yeah, it does have a little more roughness to it. Jason says, has anyone taken up your offer to visit you in Louisiana? Yes. They've already done it. Jean-Pierre came two years ago or a year ago. You remember that? We went all around New Orleans and did videos together. I th yes. And we took a lot of photos. And then uh, my true review, you know, the two guys that wear the disguises, the mustaches and the glasses and all in Florida, they visited me. We hung out for days and then I visited them the year before. Harry from England contacted me and said he wants to come visit next year and drive around and do beer reviews. Harry from uh, Blue Nose. So yes. Swilling Grog from Australia said he wanted to come here and do all the driving around and seeing beers and trying them out. But his lady read about violence in New Orleans and she was scared to come. So he said he had to cancel the plans because she was scared there would be shootouts on every street corner. <laughs> And I said, well, Dave, you know, I said, Swilling Grog, you know, it's it's not exactly like the media portrays it. <laughs> Jason says, New Orleans is probably my top three place to visit, at least in the States. If I wasn't boycotting New Orleans, I'd still be promoting it. You know, I, who, who used to um, be more of a New Orleans booster than me, right? Okay, enough jibber jabber time for the taste test. <laughs> I think that the ancient age is going to be slightly richer and full, more full flavored, but it's going to be dang close. Wing says, I can't wait. Jay Winger says, I can't wait to go to Alabama to visit my brother in his new house. Oh, I bet you'll enjoy it. I like Alabama. Okay. <clears throat> 
well, a lot of, I don't love everything about it, but I like it. Oh, <laughs> got some on my nose. Well, that's a good way to get a good appreciation of whiskey is to get it in your nose. Yeah, William Kepley was talking to me and said we ought to do a retrospective 2017 end of the year hangout, talk about beer hangouts. And he was saying that about the drama and the factionalism and the general insanity of it. And I was saying, I agree, I agree. Okay. Uh, yeah, and talking about the dislikes, that's comical. You might... You might say you had 300 dislikes this past month. I know, but it's from four people. <laughs> you know what I mean? <sighs> well, they both smell very nice. <clears throat> Let's see. I tell you what, the aroma is close. I mean, it is close. Blended, straight. I mean, uh, I'm not seeing a whole lot of difference. Peppery spice, caramel, vanilla, wood, char, dried flowers, candied fruit cake, aromas generally associated with whiskey, whatever. This one might this one might have more char though, more smoke. Jason says, I've always been curious how Southerners from one state perceive those from others, sports aside. And he never had a horrible experience with heaven and hell, neither me. The malt liquor of many people are goofy, says Jay Winger. Well, <laughs> I'm sort of like an adjunct member of that, right? Because of all the malt liquor videos I do. But I guess if I drink 40 ounces of malt liquor continuously on a day-to-day -day basis, my thinking might not be so level-headed, right? These are so similar. I, I'm telling you, I, I'm not... I'm not noticing a whole lot of difference. Oh, yeah, they got their own community, sure. And then that's all divided into factions. They're at constant civil war with each other, you know. How do Southerners see the rest of the country? I was thinking about making a video on that, but that's too controversial, I think. Yeah, while wearing a ski mask. Um, the South as it views other states. Well, that's a very interesting topic. And I always tell people this. There's the South you see Okay, there's the South you see, and there's the South I know. And the South I know is not the same as the one you see. Even if you visited down here, you're only going to see what's presented, let's say. You're, but you're not going to see what the reality is. I could make an hour-long video about that, and it'd be quite interesting because... Um, It's a dualistic society down here. It's sort of like a secret society in a way. I'll give you one example real fast. Like a deep Texas South is what you know. Well, <clears throat> that depends on where we are in Texas, you know, you see. Um, Hidalgo, Texas is not going to have the same perception as uh, Vider, Texas, perhaps, or a Beaumont, uh, but, um, or an orange. I'll give you one example, and then I'm going to do the taste challenge. My friend Paul, he's married now, but I remember he was going out with this girl about 1999. That didn't last, but My grandmother said, oh, oh, she's got a new girl, huh? I said, yeah. She said, where's this girl from? I said, Ohio. My grandmother says, Ohio. A Yankee. That's not good. So there's an example, right, of what I'm talking about. 
my mother's side of the family was from a certain B County. Oh, B County, Brownsville. Otherwise, I have some relatives in Gainesville. Okay. My great grandmother was born in Palestine, Texas in 1900. Are Californians Yankees? Uh, not necessarily. Okay, so the aroma is a wash. I cannot tell them apart with aroma. They're both so similar, smoky, and, and everything good. There's nothing bad about the aroma. The aroma is top-notch, a jewel. So let's go with breakfast. I need to say the taste test because I already ate some Kellogg's strawberry unfrosted Pop-Tarts with three cups of coffee and a vitamin C for breakfast. So this would be the breakfast after party, so to speak, pre-dawn type exemplification of uh, attenuation of iconoclasticism. Oh, well, I already think that's 10 high, but I could be wrong. See, this could be very tricky. Very tricky. Now, just keep in mind, $9.99 per bottle, same size bottle, same company, same state, Kentucky. One's blended, one's straight. But what difference does it make if they're coming across identical, right? What about the international enjoyment units? Well, I would say it's practically the same. And we talk about that in beer, right? Remember I coined that phrase about two years ago, international enjoyment units? IBUs are important, but IEUs are even much more, or much more important, the international enjoyment units. Little beeswax, honeycomb, lots of wood, char. I don't know. I don't know. I'll tell you one thing, 10 high, if you can make a blend of whiskey, a blended bourbon whiskey with this much character, you got something going on, right? You know what you're doing. You might, you might have some uh, skill in uh, distillation of beverages, lick, you know, uh, alcoholic beverages. Sounds like a breakfast out, yeah, like. <laughs> Man, I need one of those tiny cups. I bought those in uh, St. Petersburg, Florida at ABC Liquor, and it came with brandy, and it cost me $1.99 for the two glasses and the brandy. Have you tried Rebel Yell or Fighting Cock? No, I have not. I've seen Rebel Yell, but I'm, I've not seen Fighting Cock. I don't think it's sold in Louisiana. I know it's from Heaven Hill. Have you ever been to Germany for their beer festivals? No, I've never been to, uh, to Europe. <clears throat> been only to North American area countries. United States, Canada, Mexico, the Bahamas, Honduras, and uh, Costa Rica. That's it. But I have been to 48 states. Okay, um, and 10 Canadian provinces. That's not too bad, I guess. Um, I'm going to say this is uh, this is the ancient age, but it's dang close, and there's no winner. I cannot call a winner. No way. No way. No winners, no losers, but all good, all good. Can you buy a whiskey for less than $10 before tax and get a good product? You certainly can. This is evidence of it. Don't let people fool you now. Now, James Madonna, talk to him sometimes over there in New Jersey. He bought a bottle of Heaven Hill bourbon, just Heaven Hill bourbon. Said he went to the liquor store in his town and said, give me the cheapest bourbon you've got. And the man said, there it is, Heaven Hill. He already bought his second bottle yesterday, he was telling me. He said, that's a fine product. I said, you see what I mean? I said, why don't you make a video? Because he makes all those long left-wing political videos. He said, no, I'm not going to make it because I can't stand that trolling-like criticism. You know, somebody's going to come at, he's worried somebody's going to come at him with some, negative energy, you know, and just say ugly things, what he calls non-constructive criticism. 
I said, oh, how well I know about it. I said, well, why don't you just forget about that? No, he can't take it. He, because he, he knows himself, he'll fight back and he'll say some non-constructive responses. <laughs> so I said, okay. So he just privately shares that with me, you know, when he's drinking. Okay, okay, let, let's call it first and then we'll read the comments. Okay, so I'm saying this is 10, 10. I'm saying this is 10 high in my left hand, maybe you're right. and ancient age over there yeah I got it I got it it was so hard I think what broke the tie is that 10 high had just a shade and we're talking about minuscule degrees a shade less of the charred oak that you get from the ancient age Is it profound? No, it is not. But it is there. There is a difference. But I still can't call a winner. They're both very good. Okay, now to the comments. So I did win this taste challenge. Now what's coming up next? Perhaps, but I don't know this, but I hope for it. You know, we'll see. But maybe tomorrow, and I'll try to go a shorter video, but, um, you know, people start talking to me, and it's like we're just hanging out talking, so then it goes on, you see. And it's not like anybody's required to watch these things, right? Other people make videos that I'm not interested in. Guess what? Do I scream and holler and... No, I, I don't watch it. I just simply don't watch it. It's very easy just to not watch it. I don't have to make a big production out of it. I think I'm, I'm going to go with uh, Ten High versus... Uh... Another Sazerac brand. Let's try to round out the Sazerac stuff. And then we'll get into the uh, Beam, Beam Suntory, and then we'll go and put it up against the uh, Brown Foreman items. How about that? That sounds like a good per plan, doesn't it? I have fine memories of shooting Ancient Age at a friend's birthday party. Oh, okay. And he says, American blended whiskeys get a bad rap. Boy, I'll say so. People talk about them as though they're, they're rot gut, garbage, horrible undrinkable items when really in, re in reality what you could say about them is they're a little bland well that's fine that's a good approach it's a it's bland i'll rate it a c it's kind of like budweiser right they'll take a beer that eh, you know if you told me it was a c average so so not that great I'll, I'll go along with that that seems reasonable but then you get people that get on there talking about it's an f it's a two out of 100. It's horrible. The worst thing in the world. That's where I say, hold on a minute. You talking about Budweiser or are you talking about dog bite? You know, so that, that's why I started the channel because they'll take something that's just ordinary and they'll make it out like it's the worst thing on earth. And that, like William Kepley said, that's where they lose credibility. Because they're taking something that's obviously not horrible. Okay, Wing, Wing says, uh, Jay Winger, do you like Mad Dog 2020? No, not really. You talking about Mogan Dive at 2020, 20 ounce bottle, 20% alcohol. That was the original meaning of that. No, I don't. But I don't hate it, but I don't. It's not too good. Taco whiskey is terrible. I never heard of taco whiskey. I've heard of taco vodka, taco gin. I thought the taco gin was mighty good, actually, for the price, $7.99. He says taco vodka isn't too bad at all. Taka vodka is extremely popular in Louisiana. It's probably the most popular vodka in Louisiana. There's billboards everywhere. Mix is easy, just add people everywhere. So growing up in Louisiana, Taka was like the, just, just the vodka that people drink because it started here really so. Jason says, no idea. My usual vodkas are in the 25 to 30 range. Okay. Well, that makes sense. Okay, uh, Jason says, the only blended American whiskey I know for sure that is available here is Kessler. Ah, okay, doke. I've got a bottle of Kessler's. It's sold here, by the way. Jason said, the only blend, oh, Winger says, uh, Fleischmann's whiskey is an F minus, laugh out loud. And then Jason said, I believe it. We get Fleischmann's gin, 
here. I don't think we get any other Fleischmann's products. We get the Fleischmann's gin. And you might be aware that Fleischmann's was bought out by Sazerac. They own all the Fleischmann brands and they don't, I don't think the distillery is still open. But Majestic Distilling is still open in Maryland, Baltimore County, Maryland. A very old company. And they still have a rectifying plant there where they finish the, the whiskeys and the gins and whatever. And then they blend them and bottle them there. So Majestic over there in Baltimore is still in operation. And I know they still have their Los Angeles um, area. Uh, uh, Los Angeles, California, uh, bottling and blending plant. So a lot of the uh, Sazerac brands you'll get there. Like, um, gosh, get on their website and you'll see a lot of them coming from Los Angeles. It's, I don't know, what's the, what's that thing called? Uh, starts with a B. A lot of people in California get it. Bar not Barton, it's... Um, not benchmark, it's, uh, but I don't know, I don't remember. Windsor, ah, yeah, we get that Canadian Windsor here. Yes, 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 yes. It's Kess, I think Canadian Windsor's, isn't that Brown Foreman? Is Kessler worth trying? From what I've heard, it is. I've never had it, but I, everybody says it's one of the better blended. It's like, I think it's the second best selling blended whiskey in America. I think number one is, Seagram Seven Crown. Well, you know, what 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 bar didn't have Seagram Seven? How come you don't do reviews at grocery store anymore? Oh, I got an easy answer for that because Mauro wouldn't stop trying to run me over with the floor cleaner. And last year I did my last review there. I just packed up my stuff and left. It was almost like I was a magnet. If I went down on that beer aisle to do a review, here comes Mauro with the floor cleaner. I was I was saying, you don't understand what I'm trying to do here. He just couldn't wait, so I just gave up. It was, you know, it was just, I did it for four years, you know, it, or from 2012 to 2016. It, that was enough anyway. You should do a review in a classroom. I am. This is a classroom. This office is a liquor, wine, and beer classroom, right? Black Velvet? Oh, guess what I have in my cabinet? A bottle of Black Velvet. The standard one, you know, the base model, never opened. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> Guess what else I've got? <laughs> I've got a bottle of Ancient Age Preferred. I bought it in Baton Rouge at Ben Q Liquors. It used to be called Cuban Liquors. Now it's Ben Q Liquors. If anybody wants to see that bottle right now, let me know in a comment within the next 30 seconds and I'll go get the bottle and show you. Otherwise, in a couple of months, I'll do a review of the of the elusive ancient age preferred, not even on the company's website. It only exists in reality, not in the internet world. <laughs> well, very nice. Come on, Winger. Ever had Evan Williams green label or white? You're not watching my channel, I don't think. I have done Evan Williams green and white label so many times, it's ridiculous. I even finished off the green label bottle. Jason said a few years ago, I considered doing a comparison of cheap Canadian whiskeys. In other words, Black Velvet, Canadian Mist, and Seagram's. Yes, and I'm going to do that. Now, Canadian Mist... I'm sorry, Canadian Mist did not hold up in competition. It got bounced so fast. It was too dull. We did an examination of it. Everybody complained. Didn't taste bad, just didn't have any taste. We did the dang uh, Seagram's VO. Now, we had some complaints. It was a little dull, but it was nowhere nearly as dull and as lifeless as the Canadian Mist. So the Seagram's VO could definitely be put into a rotation of challenges. And not to mention this Seagram's VO Gold, which I was able to get a bottle of it. 
I've got the VO gold. It was discontinued in 2017. Seagram's told me. I wrote a letter to the company. They said, that's Diageo Seagram's. But they said, uh, no, it's gone. We're sorry. It was discontinued, and we have no plans to bring back the VO gold. Aged eight years. Canadian mist tastes like vanilla. Oh, we found it tasted like nothing. Winger says, my bad. I'll have to go watch those reviews. Yeah, I think you'll like them. There's a lot of them. I hope you got a lot of time. Jason says, well, I came back from vodka. Well, he came from a vodka background. So Irish and Canadian whiskey provide a nice transition to bourbon, scotch, and others. Uh, it makes sense. So you kind of like went up the taste ladder. Yeah. Yeah, that's where I started with uh, K&B vodka, Cats and Best Off vodka. The first liquor I ever tried was Cats and Best Off vodka made by, guess who? Yeah, you got it, Sazerac. Then I jumped up to uh, Taka vodka. Then the uh, the uh, Sazerac rye. Then I went to the the whiskeys and gin and whatnot. Winger says, uh, "No, Sazerac, not Sazerac." I'm about to crack open a Steel Reserve pineapple. Oh my goodness! Hey, why don't you just drink some pineapple juice? <laughs> it's kind of early for uh, hard liquor. Oh, well, I'm just tasting. I'm not drinking. I'm just tasting it. See the difference? I wouldn't dream of drinking liquor this early in the morning, but I'll taste it just for general purposes and uh, for consumer um, applications and uh, entertainment purposes. Yeah, eight percent. I would avoid that. But anyway, you know. All right, so that's it. Uh, it's a it's a tie, a wash, ancient age, straight bourbon whiskey, and I intend to do the ancient age preferred sooner than later versus 10 high blended whiskey, both sour mash, both 40%, you know, 80 proof. Uh, it's a tie, so pick your poison. Uh, you're paying the same price, literally exactly $9.99 per bottle, so you can't lose. No rock gut, no badness, no horribleness, just uh, I guess the worst you could say about either one is they're kind of ordinary, but ordinary doesn't mean bad. Jason, Ronald, have you tried the Ballast Point Mocha Marlin? Never heard of it, never seen it. He's got a bomber waiting in the fridge for a special occasion. Well, don't give it to me. I'd probably drop it on the pavement and burst and smash it and shatter it like I did with the Bourbon County Stout. Better than opening a Four Loco, yeah. Four loco gold, 14%. I wouldn't drink that if people paid me $100 to drink it. Well, maybe I would then. I know a guy that drinks it every week. And he's a bulk merchandiser for Anheuser-Busch. Their distributor, Southern Eagle, he said he has no negative side effects from drinking that. I told him, I said, you must have a cast iron stomach. A cast iron stomach. He drinks that in earthquake like the... It's nothing. I said, I'd die. I would be dead. He's 52 years old. I'd be dead. Anyway, enough of that. Some of the viewers wish I was dead, but I'm sorry. Uh, if I got the positive energy and the joy of life and you have the anger and the self-hatred, I can't help that. I wish you would not be that way. I, I don't know what to do about people's personal self-misery. I'm sorry. I just pray that, you know, you would improve let's say earthquake ha 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 nasty yeah it's an atrocity of mankind is what it is okay well enough of this uh, it was interesting <coughs> going on long enough if enough people ask me about the southern states thing of course I could only talk about Louisiana but I would think that it's probably not that different from Alabama or Mississippi especially considering my interaction with Alabamian and Mississippians. <laughs> say no more. Nudge, nudge, wink, wink, say no more. Okay, but anyway, um, it's an interesting little, uh, yeah, it's kind of like a different country, really, within a country, you know what I mean? All right, thank you.